Hi, I hope you guys are starting to day out with the wind. Uh, you know, I got to thinking about gears and the whole process I went through when regearing my FJ for 35 inch tires. And if you're anything like me and you put bigger tires on your rig or you want to put bigger tires on your rig and you're thinking about regearing and you just want to understand everything that, that surrounds regearing your truck, then you're going to want to stay right here because I'm going to break it down. So the first thing I want to go over is terminology that can get confusing. You might hear terms like low gear, high gear, low gear ratio, high gear ratio. What does that mean? Okay, so when we're talking about low gear and high gear, you are strictly talking about the gear in your transmission, as in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, overdrive. Overdrive being a high gear. And it can quickly get confusing when you hear low gear ratio, low gear, that is not the same thing. In fact, that's the exact opposite because typically your first gear, your lowest gear in your transmission is going to be your highest gear, highest gear ratio. So when you say gear, you're talking about the gear in your transmission. And when you say gear ratio, you're talking about the actual uh, formula for calculating the gear ratio, which is counting the number of teeth on your ring gear, which attaches to the wheels, and then divided by the number of teeth on your pinion gear, which is the connection of, from your transmission and your engine. So that ratio, you do that calculation, you get a number. St stock gear ratio on the FJ Cruiser, 3.73 to one. And that's a common gear ratio for off-road rigs. And that works great if you have stock tires. The thing is, when you, when you increase the tire size to get more clearance, to get that more aggressive look, you essentially lower the gear ratio, which gives you a smaller number, which is bad for your engine. It makes your engine work much harder. And um, I have a really good visualization that I'm gonna show you right now that'll help you understand exactly why and how and, and everything about how increasing a tire diameter uh, fucks with your gear ratio. So, bam. Let's get it. The visualization that best helped me understand the idea of what's going on when we re-gear and when we change our tire size is to think of it all as a fulcrum where the lever, right, the, the long side of the lever, that is the lever on which your engine and transmission push down. The short side of the lever, that's your load. That, that's, that's the weight of your vehicle. That's your rooftop tent. That's the hill you're trying to charge up. That's the mass of your tires. That's, that, that is the weight of your vehicle. And the rock, in this case, the fulcrum point is the size of your tire, the diameter of your tire. So let's say that right now it's in stock configuration. The engine pushes this much to lift the load to go up hills uh, and, and that works out great. So when you change your tire size, your tire, tire diameter, you move the point on the lever where the fulcrum lies. And what you're going for is to make it easier for your engine. So you want the, a longer portion on the, on the lever side and, you, and a shorter per, por, portion on the load side. <clears throat> but what happens when you, uh, this is stock, what happens when you add diameter size is you go the opposite way. Now you only have this much of a lever to push all that load up in the air and you have to work really hard. So what re-gearing does is it moves that lever back to stock and even a little bit more. So now when you're going up hills, when you're moving all that weight, your rooftop tent, your engine does not have to work so hard to lift that the same amount. It is so much easier. All right, so stock, raising tire diameter, changing gear ratio as a lever, as a fulcrum, done. 
Another way to think about the work that your engine is doing when you re-gear for bigger tires is to imagine yourself as a mountain biker trying to ride your mountain bike up a hill. <clears throat> when you're riding and you, you hit a hill, you want to get into a low transmission gear, first, second, third, so that you can have a high gear ratio. And what that's going to do, when, you, when you're riding your bike, you notice, if you've ever you know, had this experience, you notice that you, you pedal a lot faster um, and you move a little bit slower but you don't have to exert as much energy and power into each pedal revolution to get yourself up the hill. You could almost sit down while doing it. Um, <clears throat> and the opposite way, if you were that mountain biker and you went into a high gear, you would have to, you would be forced to stand up and, and take all of your energy and just thrust it into the pedals. <sighs> just to get up that hill you have to exert so much energy and work and you know sometimes that's fun especially when you're mountain biking you you want to do that um, but as it relates to your engine you don't want your engine to have to work that hard you want your engine to last a long time and uh, when you when you start out in a low gear which is a high gear ratio um, your engine will rev higher will we'll turn more RPMs, just like that bicycle rider when he's spinning the, RP, the, the rotation of the pedals really fast to get up that hill. Your engine is gonna do the same thing. But what's different is when you put your engine into a higher RPM, you are getting closer, you're right at that cusp of where your engine is making the best horsepower and torque. And you have that torque and horsepower right there when you, when you press the accelerator pedal. It's available right now when you get when you get into the prime RPM zone um, and, and you're spinning more RPM, but your engine does not have to exert an, as much energy. So regearing, regearing is a good idea. I think it's clear after <clears throat> after uh, thinking about the fulcrum, using the bike, the mountain biker as an analogy, um, I think you're equipped now to answer the question for yourself, should I re-gear? And yeah, I, I think you should. Um, <clears throat> for a little more detail, when I, I, was, I was running 35s on this before I decided to put gears in it. And the stock gear ratio, 3.73 to one with the 35 inch tires, I was trying to scale up the mountain um, coming home from work every day and the FJ would fall flat on his face and what I mean by that is I'm giving it maximum pedal it downshifted maximum to like third gear it's rewinding out so hard and I'm still not getting up that hill and everything is working on maximum overload after I decided to re-gear I put 488s in it and thanks to gear calculators all over the internet you can Try to find a dyno sheet of your, where your vehicle makes its best power and uh, torque. And you can try to uh, use one of those RPM calculators, which you plug in your desired tire diameter, your gear ratio, and what RPM, you, and then you'll be able to see what RPM that's gonna give you. Yeah, so I put 488s in it, and now on that same hill that I drive up on the way home, um, I don't have to use as much pedal, it downshifts only one gear, uh, or I'll put it in fourth, and it'll just mob up that hill in fourth, and I'll pass people going 65 with my foot barely in the pedal. And yeah, it's spinning 3,200 RPM, but I'm making so much torque and horsepower at that RPM that this, it's the difference between literally falling on your face and charging up that hill. I hope that you got something, some value out of this today. And if you did, you know, help the channel out, hit the thumbs up button, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I, I really enjoy doing this and I'm only gonna get better and better. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.